I'm Daniel Zengel with Regenotech here with Don Lipscomb. And this week we're going to be talking about growth factors. This first video we're doing is on platelet-derived growth factor. Uh, so Don, can you tell us a, a bit about this? Sure, so um, platelet-derived growth factor, we'll just refer to it as PDGF. All right. Otherwise it's a mouthful. Uh, so it's a growth factor found in the alpha granules of platelets, and it plays a really vital role in wound healing, and, in, and inflammation, which we'll see. Um, so it exhibits something called a mitogenic and a chemotactic effect. So it's mitogenic. So right. this basically means it stimulates cell division through mitosis. Okay. Um, and so this is necessary for the cell division of fibroblasts that are the producers of collagen one. Okay, got it. Um, so also PDGF um, has t chemotactic effects and so what the, this does is basically it sends out a chemical signal that says, come over here and initiate cell migration. Sure, what type of cells is it attracting? So it attracts other fibroblasts. It also attracts muscle cells and um, white blood cells called macrophages. Got it. And this is where the inflammatory properties come in. I see, so it's not that the growth factor itself is causing inflammation, but rather that through uh, chemotaxis yeah. Uh, it's it's attracting these um, macrophages. macrophages. Okay, exactly. Got it. So um, these macrophages are actually really crucial in wound healing um, because they break down the injured tissue, mm -hmm. um, and they also aid in reconstruction of new tissue growth because they secrete additional growth factors themselves and um, other cell signaling molecules. So these other cell signaling molecules are involved in processes like angiogenesis. Okay. So bl new blood vessel formation. Right, right. Okay, so you were seeing like a, a cascade of effects exactly. from the PDGF. Exactly, and so this is part of the wound healing cascade. Oh, okay. Um, so not only does it do this, but it also recruits and um, supports the proliferation of neutrophiles, which are another type of white blood cell, mm -hmm. um, chondrocytes, mm -hmm. which are um, tendon cells. Right. So this, these, cell, these cell signaling molecules, uh, depending on w what location right. this was applied to, that's when it would uh, recruit these cells. Right, so uh, a PDGF might not recruit uh, tendocytes if to to like an epithelial wound, right? Yeah, right, and exactly. vice versa. Exactly, it, it can sort of tell what's needed in the area. Yeah, in a way. so so this is the way that cells communicate with each other. So they communicate through cell signaling, mm -hmm. and the only way that they can get information about their exterior environment is by picking up proteins that are left behind by other cells. Okay, so it, this is. This is definitely um, this is def definitely an area specific effect. So, um, okay. for instance, uh, platelet derived growth factor will also uh, recruit osteoblasts right. too. So, uh, this is basically something that, depending on the location, you will have a recruitment of the cells that are related to the injured location cells. Right, and that and that really I think speaks to how PRP is used for all these diverse applications. It makes exactly. sense if, if you've got platelet-derived growth factor that's recruiting whatever's needed at a specific site of injury, it makes sense why this could be useful for tendons, bones, wound healing. And, exactly. Right. Um, so although platelet-derived growth factor might you know, have all these potentials to have a healing effect and you know, recruit the macrophages to clean out the debris and facilitate all these different um, wound healing responses, Depending on the preparation of PRP, it might not necessarily be a good, uh, the platelet drive growth factor, all of these great uh, aspects of it might right. not necessarily be the best. Depending on the preparation of the PRP? Well, um, I guess, I mean, if you had a very leukocyte rich right. PRP. I can see that. And you're applying it to a site that already has a lot of inflammation. Yeah. Then this, uh, this additional inflammation right. might irritate it further. I see what you're saying. And also, if you if this too much inflammation would create an, an inhibitory response on um, on the PRP itself. Right, right. So I mean, I, I get what you're saying because we're talking about in other videos leukocyte rich yeah. PRP versus leukocyte poor PRP. And leukocyte rich is when you include the buffy coat layer, which has all the leukocytes and 
and um, you and we know that normally with PRP they're going to use leukocyte poor PRP, mm -hmm. also known as pure PRP, and that's what you most commonly see. It's it's going to be very clear um, yeah. sort of plasma solution um, or amber colored really, and so you're saying that since the platelet derived growth, growth platelet derived growth factors that are in PRP are already recruiting leukocytes you wouldn't necessarily want to have extra leukocytes in there to begin with unless it's specifically somewhere where you want to promote inflammation. Exactly. Also because once once you start recruiting these um, these other uh, macrophages mm -hmm. and leukocytes and even just the presence of leukocytes alone will uh, cause uh, production of cytokines which uh -huh. are immune system cell signaling molecules right and these have an inflammatory response so once again you're getting that cascade right. effect. and additionally so with some PRP preparations you have the option of adding an activator right a platelet activator like calcium chloride or thrombin exactly and um, this this will cause an initial burst basically of uh, the cell signaling molecules or growth factors uh -huh. to be uh, released into the PRP, for instance, um, platelet-derived growth factor, and um, there's one other one that are released uh, really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, uh, TG, TGF beta, TGF which we'll get beta. to later. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, A video these, on that coming video soon. On that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, these these will these will be released really quickly. Um, I think with thrombin and calcium chloride, it'll be. Uh, I think 95% are released within the first hour. Oh, I see. Something. So that could cause some really rapid inflammation exactly. if you activate the PRP. Exactly. It's like sending out a, a bunch of a bunch of 911 calls and right. getting the police from all over the country to come to your door. Right, right. And, that, so. and that, that's consistent with when we see an activator used, right? So we'll see them use calcium chloride to activate PRP, mm -hmm. typically in surgical applications or wound healing applications. Where Which you, makes sense you where want, you want to call in the cal cavalry. Right, yeah. exactly. But if you're treating like chronic arthritic knee, you know, arthritis or... Uh, You'd want that gradual release of right. highly concentrated platelets over time. Got you it. You know, you'd want something that that gradually accelerates and reaches a plateau versus that one big spike. Right, because yeah. that could be painful and detrimental if all of a sudden their exactly. knee's really inflamed. Yeah, you want to run a marathon, not do a sprint. So. Right, got it, okay. All right, Don, well, thank you for educating us on platelet-derived growth factor. Uh, I think we've got some more videos coming up today on the other growth factors found in PRP, so stick around.